usually as someone who is working on human rights of LGBT persons in Uganda, what we look at are the visible forces that we see opposing us every day. This include, you know, the, the legislation, you know, the old laws and the new laws. Uh, we look at the policies, we look at the media, you know, the things that we see. And then we look, of course, at the churches and the pastors. But then we forget the, we forget the invisible forces that these are the norms, the culture, the, the issues that inform the everyday person. These invisible forces that hold the power. Esta es la realidad actual. Grupos de poder que venían actuando bajo las sombras, tras bambalinas, como los grupos empresariales, el crimen organizado o los fundamentalistas religiosos han secuestrado las instituciones, han secuestrado a los estados, están utilizando las leyes, los recursos públicos para utilizarlos en favor de sus propios intereses, para imponer minas en territorios ancestrales de los pueblos indígenas, para imponer eh, su visión del mundo y sobre todo para intentar eh, construir una narrativa basada en la discriminación, basada en el racismo, en la misoginia, una narrativa que pretende mantener las desigualdades para asegurar eh, ventajas, privilegios y poder de un grupo cada vez más pequeño de poderosos en todo el mundo. Power is a very complex thing, and I think it's important for, in that sense to see power as a more fluid term, and it's about the contestation of power, but it's also about power being used to get uh, to create societies that are more sustainable, that are more equitable, that are more just. If you look at the problem of violence against offenders and attacks against offenders in terms of these three levels of power, your strategies and responses can be much more comprehensive and responsive to the context. So you're looking at how you respond to norms and beliefs in the way that they're manipulated. You look at the role of shadow or hidden actors in controlling the public or policy agenda. And you look at the role of states in colluding and using police and military to silence defenders and can have a much more coherent response and strategy to the issues of violence. I do think that the particular version of the power analysis tool that Jess has developed and that we had a chance to experiment with in this convening could be a really valuable new lens um, that the partners that, that AJWS supports could, could leverage to really add value in terms of how they're thinking about systemic threats and drivers that are causing um, the constant deprivation of rights that they're trying to resist. So I think that particular power analysis combined with the feminist lens in terms of thinking about the voices, um, the well-being of, of women activists, the particular struggles that they're facing. So I think the combination of those two analytical frameworks can really help our partners think about their work in a more systematic, collective, and movement-building frame. For me, I think uh, one of the biggest uh, realization was that uh, we oftentimes just really focus on traditional way of our strategy, like focus, uh, focusing on lobby, and then laws and policy, like focusing on more visible powers. So we really didn't actually think about the hidden powers and in, in invisible powers, which actually is a very important factor and we need to actually have a stronger st strategy as well. And also interconnection between these uh, different strategies.